In this video series, you'll learn how to perform electrical and thermal co-analysis of a printed circuit board by coupling ANSYS SI Wave and ANSYS Ice Pack. In part one, you'll learn how to import the board from ODB++ format into SI Wave and review the layout and schematic of the PCB. DCIR drop and thermal analyses are critical for printed circuit boards because heat generated by integrated circuits and by power losses in the conductors on the board can degrade the performance and reliability of electronic devices. Power dissipation of the ICs and power losses across the board are the key inputs for thermal analysis. ANSYS SI Wave can calculate power losses in conductors on a PCB. When coupled with ANSYS Ice Pack, you can do thermal simulation to accurately predict operating temperatures of electronic devices. By using these tools, you can evaluate thermal performance of a board and detect problems early in the design cycle. Here's an SI Wave virtual prototype of a printed circuit board that was created from an Altium layout. In its physical form, this board is a Wi-Fi-enabled HDMI consumer electronics device. You'll see how to import this board into ANSYS SI Wave. Design automation features in SI Wave enable you to easily import designs from popular layout tools. ODB++ is one such popular format. From the Import tab, select ODB++. Browse to the ODB directory location. ODB++ is a PCB fabrication database. It has many folders, fonts, input, matrix, steps, etc. Data related to conductors, solder masks, silk screens, and drills are located in the Layers section under the Steps folder. The Matrix folder has a matrix file with the stack up. Netlists and CADNet contain electrical information about circuit connectivity. Additional EDA-style netlists are placed in the EDA folder. Select the ODB folder. Click the Import button. The translator extracts a list of nets from the ODB++ database. Click the Import Configuration button to include all the nets. The layout appears along with the workflow wizard that lists the steps to prepare the board for simulation. For this workflow, the first two steps are already completed because the ODB++ database contained that information. There are also some verification steps in the wizard, but we'll skip them now because this board is known to be okay. You need only do a DCIR drop analysis to calculate power loss as input for the thermal simulation. But first, review the board and the schematic to find where to assign voltage and current sources. This board has a microprocessor with reference designator U100. A DDR2 RAM device is represented by U201. U800 represents an FPGA IC. These devices are all power consumers, so we'll be assigning current sources to them. U503 is a multifunctional power management unit. U802 is a buck step-down regulator. P703 is a B-style USB connector used to deliver a 5-volt supply from off-board. We'll be assigning voltage sources to the USB connector and to these voltage regulators. Observe the schematic. There are six power nets on the board. There's a 1 volt, a 1.2 volt, both a digital and analog 1.8 volt, 3.3 volts and 5 volts, plus two ground nets, EMI ground and ground. You need to find the corresponding pins on the voltage regulator modules for these power nets and add voltage sources to them. Pins 20 and 23 are linear low dropout voltage regulators. For example, pin 20 has the net name P1.8VA and will connect a 1.8 volt source to it. Pin 23 has the net name P3.3V and gets connected to a 3.3 volt source. Pins 5 and 14 are buck converter outputs and so they connect to their nets through inductors. For instance, pin 5 on U503 connects to net L5031 through an inductor L503 to power the 1.8 volt net. And pin number 14 connects to net L3041 through an inductor L304 to power the 1.0 volt net. For the voltage regulator U802, pin 4 is connected to net P1.2V and will get a 1.2 volt source. Ground and the 5 volt supply voltage on net P50V are supplied from off the board. They come directly from the micro USB connector P703. Another voltage source of value 5 volts will be created for this connector. U201 represents the DDR2 RAM. Its pin J1 is connected to the 1.8 volt supply net. Since the RAM is a consumer of power, you need to create a current sink to represent the current it draws. The microprocessor and the FPGA also consume power, so you need to define current sinks for U100 and U800 as well. 
This concludes part one of this video series. In part two, you will define the current sinks and voltage sources for power integrity analysis.